so hello guys for you to be a profitable trader regardless of the trading strategy you use the most important thing is being able to understand what to call market structure so for those of you who don't understand market structure is simply the direction in which this market is actually moving and there are three directions where the forest market crypto market or stock market move the first one is what to call the uptrend the second one is the downtrend and then the third one is what to call the sideways or the ranging market so in today's video i'm going to break down to you what you need to understand in all these type of market structures and which sort of trade you should execute whenever you cite any of these market structures and i'm going to tell you the right ways to execute those sort of trade as well so if this is your first time on this channel hello guys welcome to my channel and welcome to paris crypto and forest on this channel i mainly focus on sharing tips on how you and i can actually make money from the crypto forest and stock market so if you think you need more videos like this and you find this channel helpful don't forget to smash that subscribe button like this video once you go straight on my computer let me share with you using the real-time market to explain to you what market structure means and how market structures appears in different time frames plus how you can trade them correctly for more profit so that i just said let's get straight on my computer so hello guys now that we have my computer let me share with you every single thing you need to know about trading um the three type of market structures we have which is the sideways market or also known as the ranging market or the uptrend and downtrend and the reason why we are starting the sideways or ranging market is because the ranging market is what grows to become either an uptrend it's what grows to become either an uptrend or a downtrend so it's advisable to start with the sideways market first so however please if you are watching this video my advice is that watch this video to the very end because i'm going to give you some critical rules like some very important rules you should keep in mind whenever you are trading this sort of markets like regardless of any of the markets you are trading there are some rules that applies to both markets and i'm going to give you these key rules that you need to stay with whenever you are trading it so that aside let's get straight and let me show you everything right on trading view so as i just said we are starting with the sideways market first so now if you've been following me for a long time you know that i like using the I like using trading view for my tutorial and then at the same time i'm a day trader so i'm more of the time using the four hour time frame so i'm just going to go down to the four hour time frame and then if you look at this market carefully here is a, clear, a typical example of what to mean by a sideways market so for example let me get this here let me put out the most clear touches so if you should look at this area whereby you can, if you can see these two yellow lines and i believe you can see it and if you should look in between these two yellow lines right now you can see that the market is finding difficulty on moving to a specific direction like for example here was a short uptrend the, the trend got up to this area and then what it did next was that it created a downtrend again so this sort of market is what is known as a sideways market because the market is not moving to any specific direction but the truth is that well, regardless whether it's moving to a specific direction or not there's actually a way to trade it so when you see this sort of market the first thing you need to look out for is look at the key resist the key areas of the market so for example let me get rid of all of this so what i mean by the key areas in this market is simply the areas whereby this market has been moving for a long time and is unable to break below or above so for that what i necessarily do is that the first thing i get my uh, re clear resistant level you might be asking why didn't i place it at this overall high here the reason i did not place it at this overall high is simply because that was just a fake out that later returned to the box immediately so the first thing you do when you see this sort of market is that you get your resistance area and then you look at your support area again so in case you don't understand support and resistance well i'll be linking to a video down in the comments invite down in the description that you should check out that video will take you through everything you need to know about support and resistance so whilst you are looking for this ranging market here's one thing i'll let you know this part this part like this is not part of what we are looking at we are mainly considering from this uh consistent up, uptrend to this part of the market this is what we are looking at we are not considered about uh, this other part of the market it's none of our business what we want to focus on is this ranging area because when you are trading a ranging market your main focus should be at where the market is currently ranging and ignore the trend because if you want to miss the trend with the ranging part you're actually going to get the market wrongly so now first that now that you've gotten the market strong, you know that this market is actually ranging now here are the ways in which you can trade this market there are three ways in which you can actually trade this market method number one so one is trading from zone a zone one zone a to zone b 
So what I mean by trading from zone A to zone B is simply, so it's simply you looking at the market direction and then you see that the market is moving up and down. Like from here, here, it came down here, went up here, came back, came back. So you clearly know that, okay, whenever the market gets to the, either the resistance or support area, it quickly banks below. So now when you see this sort of market, you two should be looking for an opportunity to trade it from either of these zones. So for example, if you can look at it carefully, the market is in the middle of nowhere currently. So currently, the market is in the middle of nowhere. So this is not the right time to trade it. But then let's use the previous movement of this market to actually assume we want to trade it. So if you wanted to trade this set of markets, you should be looking for this market to trade to either any of these zones. So for example, let's say here is zone A. Let me mark it as A. And then here is zone B. It is not zone B, zone D. So pardon my pronunciation. So now you know these two zones. So whenever the market straight up to this um, zone A level, you should be looking for an opportunity to place a sell order. But before you should place a sell order, you should look, wait for the next candlestick to appear. Like the next candlestick should be a bearish candlestick shows a sign of rejection. So for example, let me show you what I mean by a candlestick showing a sign of rejection. So for example, let's take a look at here. You see, when this market did this fake out here, what did you see? You can see this long doji candlestick here. Take a look at this bearish, this bearish candle here. That's what I mean by a bearish rejection. Once you should look for a candle that will print this sort of heavy movement on that particular key level. Once you see this sort of movement, you should know that, okay, the market is ready to break below, returning back to the support area again. However, when you don't see something like this, then you can wait for the next one to two candlestick. If there are two consistent uh, bearish candlestick with high momentum, then there are also good opportunity for you to place a sell order. Like for example, let's take a look at this one. You can see after this candle appeared, you can see this long bearish candle came up to this level. Then it created another one with uh, indecision candle. So this candle is called indecision candle because you can see there's a week above and there's a week below. So after this candle, now you can look for the next candle to actually place an order. And if you, if you should take a look at it, the next candle was a bearish candle, which also indicates sign of a sell. And then if you were to sell at this point, you should be selling, for example, you place an order here. It will be from here to here, with your stop loss being above this line. And that is still uh, 2.7 to 1. So you see, so this is simply trade this sort of area. Once you see market moving in this sort of area, don't be in hurry to place either a buy order because you see a minor uptrend or be in a hurry to place a sell order. Simply wait for the market to trade to any of this zone. And then print any sort of rejection that you are used to. So there are different sort of uh, market rejection at both bearish and bullish positions. So one of the favorites that I like using is this one here, whereby the market creates a very long doji and then a sign of rejection. So in this way, you can be looking for an opportunity to actually trade it back to the opposite direction. And this one is also vice versa. It can also print it down at a support level. And when you print at the support level, it should be a green candle with a long wick like this and then a very tiny body at the very top of it, closing it up. So you simply wait for the next candle to close and that one uh, tells you what to do. So that's simply the first way in which you trade a ranging market. You're simply waiting for the market to trade from the current zone. Like for this market right now, you're simply waiting for it to trade from here to either here or here. Then you decide what to do. If you trade to the support level, you wait for a support price rejection and then you place a buy order. And then on the other hand, you wait for it to get to the resistance area. If you get to the resistance area and then print a bearish rejection, then you also place a sell order as well. So these are simply the ways in which you can actually trade a ranging market. It's simply trading from one zone to another. So in case you don't have a clear strategy in which you can actually trade this, then you can watch my playlist that is called Trading Strategy Playlist. I'll be linking to it down in this video description as well. On that particular playlist, I focus more on sharing my real-time trading strategy. Like I'm a pure... um. This thing, I'm a pure price action trader, even though I use one or two indicators which are necessary at times, like the moving average and then the session bias indicator. So even though I use those, I'm a pure price action trader, so I often look at the market direction to predict my move. So you can also learn every single thing I do right here for 100% free by uh, following that channel and also joining my Telegram channel. So that's simply the first way in which you actually trade a ranging market. It's simply waiting for it to get to a zone and then you trade from that zone. And then another way in which you can actually trade a ranging market is let me just uh, clone this the number two way is simply waiting for it to break below a support or resistance level so waiting for what we call a breakout to so waiting for breakout 
So what I mean by waiting for a breakout is that this area here is seen as what we call price build up. What I mean by price build up is simply because the market in this area is trying to gain momentum to move either to the to move upward or to move downwards. So this one doesn't mean we are talking we are not talking about the other part of this tutorial yet. We are still talking about trading the ranging market. So this sort of market simply means that um the the market is trying to gain energy to move either to the upside or the downside. As much as you can trade from one zone to another, another thing you can look at for is waiting for this market to break above here. So let me get my drawing to the market to break above here, probably here, and then come back for a retest and then give you a rejection. Then you place a buy order immediately after the rejection to the upside. So this is also another way in which you can trade this market. It's simply waiting for the market to break out of either the support or resistance level and then you place either a buy or sell order depending on where it broke out from so if it broke out from the resistance level you should be placing a sell order provided that it went and came back for a retest like for example if you should look at this area here if you should look at this area here you can see that the market broke out all right it broke out all right but it did not come back for a retest the retest actually break below that means it's a fake out that's why when the market break out, you don't place order immediately, but you wait for a pullback before you place your order. And then that is the first, that is the second way in which you can actually place an order in this market. It's simply waiting for the market to break out and then come back for, for a retest. So as it can do this for both the upside, and then it can also choose to come down here, do like this, and then you also place a sell order. So provided that there's a retest and a rejection, it's a clear sign that you can trade the market to that direction. But now here's something you need to note was trading all of these directions in this particular range in market is the reason why you can place either a sell or buy order when you break out of any of this area and come back for a retest is simple if the market should break out of this area to the upside to the upside and then come back for a retest it's simply a sign to tell you that the buyers have gained momentum of the market and then the sellers have no energy anymore so this is a clear sign that if the market can go up come back and then sellers push it here and then tries pushing back upwards again it means that okay the sellers have taken control of the market meaning the buyers have lost their power meaning you can buy with the market from there but then if it break below the sell position here and then it pull back to here and then shows a rejection it also shows that the buyers have lost their power meaning you can follow the seller's direction now so here is one thing to also note again the whole thing moving on in this box here you can see this area we highlighted in between these two yellow line here is simply buyers and sellers trying to fight yourself to see who is strongest because the strongest is going to determine where the market goes next so this is simply what is happening here simply the buyers and sellers debating on where to take the market to so by the time the market break out of either this support or either this resistance which is the resistance is at this top here and then the support below here simply means that whosoever break below its path has the most power in the market now and whosoever break below and maintains it which is the instruction I gave simply means that you can trade with that person now. So for example, let me take a look at um, a previous movement of this market. So now let me look for a previous movement where it has created that sort of movement before. So for example, let me just use this minor area to show you. Take a look at this market here. You can see the market went here. I'm coming. Let me get it again. Okay. So for example take a look at this market from here it came here came here came here and then broke below came back for a retest and they gave a sign of rejection at this level so by this by the time this rejection candle closes let me change it to red so by the time this rejection candle closes at this point okay let me use blue since the red is missing with the bearish candle so by the time this market broke out of this resistance area here if you had placed a short position before maybe from here and then your stop loss just above this resistance area by giving it some room meaning you would have still cash 1 to 1.9 because the market closed here so you would have gotten 1 to 1.9 as well this is the benefit of you waiting for the market to retest and then before placing your order so now this is the first part is simply how to trade a rangy market is simply trading it in this manner that i've shown you is waiting for a possible rejection or a breakout then you follow each of those directions so now let's look at the other ways in which you can also trade this market as well so hello guys now we are done with the sideways market no go back so now i believe you've understood the sideways market and how to trade it whenever you see it now the next thing is let's look at the following one which is also known as the uptrend so now the uptrend is simply a market that moves higher so as the name said it's an uptrend starting like this 
like this okay like this so the uptrend is a market that moves in this order it keep going higher and higher so that's simply how the uptrend moves so now let's take a look at a real example of an uptrend on my trading software okay so here is the pair between euro jpy so let me just close it up as i like using the real market so here is euro jpy on a one hour chart so the euro jpy direction if you should look at it carefully you can see that the market moved from here up to this level here um let me just get it out like this and then because the market move from here up to this level can see how the market moves straight upward so this is how the uptrend appears however for, before an uptrend is created a structure is created and that structure is what i've taught you in the past video which is what we call the ranging system like for example before this uptrend was created you can see clearly that the market was struggling within this area here if you should see clearly you can see that the market struggled around this area for a long time before this uptrend was finally created that's why you need to understand the ranging market before coming for the uptrend so let's just get rid of that as we've already known that so here's an uptrend so when you see an uptrend being created for example the market nearly broke out of um a resistant area as i already told you so i think let me get these things in to make you better understand it for those who watch the video from the beginning so here initially you know i told you something about a ranging market and here was a clear ranging market before the uptrend created you see here is a ranging market before it eventually broke below pull back and then came back on top again which is what i told you about uh, waiting for the market to come back in pull back and then give you a sign of rejection you can see this one give a sign of rejection came back here before actually moving fully upwards again so this is the thing about uh, trading an uptrend so for an uptrend to be created first of all the market need to gather momentum within this sort of area like this and after this area before the uptrend is finally created and then what actually makes an uptrend an uptrend is simply the swing highs and lows being created for those of you who don't understand what i mean by swing highs and lows let me mark them out for you so the first one here is the here is known as low which is the lowest point where the uptrend started which is the low here is known as the low and then let me just clone it this one is known as higher low higher low also represented with the uh, hl in some tutorials you see hl it also means higher low here is higher low and then let me clone it again over here over here is seen as the higher high the higher high because it keep going up and up so this simply you can see you have a low higher low higher high and then under higher low here under higher high here so that's simply how the market actually moves so this is what makes an uptrend is simply the market moving in a specific direction like for example if you should look at this part of the market no specific direction being moved it goes and comes however if you should look at this one you see that the market keep breaking one uh key level to another so once it keep once it keep breaking this key level it simply means that it's moving upward so now when trading an uptrend here are the things you need to look out for before you should trade an uptrend as i said in this video my main aim in this video is to show you how to trade this market not really any other thing is simply showing you how to trade this market so before i trade the market the first thing is simply looking at the market uh, moving point so here was its initial point and then the next thing to look out for is that you wait for it to create this first higher high and then it pull back and then it move upward and then take out this higher high here so for example you can see clearly that the market took out this higher high by coming back to for a retest so this is our uptrend this uptrend doesn't move just straight upward like that it always goes and come back and take out that previous area and for you to trade an uptrend you should always be looking out for this sort of take out before you place an order so you can see clearly that the market went and they came back and took out this area so if i should even go to the four hours chart you will see still that place very clear you can see, see that place you can see the market went upward came back then went upward again and then you see that it came back to take this previous area and even this one you are seeing here came back to retake this one here you can see 
this is also another if we should consider the trend from this area this is another one that was taken out by this particular area so for example when you see an uptrend you should you don't you don't have to place any other until you wait for the market to come and retake the previous area the reason why you need to always wait for the market to come and retake the previous area is simply because whenever the market is moving it will move straight forward it will always come back like no matter how far it has gone it will always come back to that previous area before it will decide its next direction so for example let's take a look at this other point here take a look at this one here which consider it just came back to retake this one after so many days it still came back here so at these key levels is where you determine whether you want to continue buying the uptrend or placing a sell order so all of them depending on that market structure at that very point so let me get rid of this one okay, let me just go back to the lower time frame so i can see it more clearly okay let me just minimize this minimize this so for example you met this market at this point let me get rid of all of this for example you came the market has already retaken this one and then it went upward and they came back to retake this one at this point you should be looking to place a buy order the moment it creates one or two bullish candle the reason is that number one the market is an uptrend so since it's an uptrend it's very positive for you to place uh, a buy market whenever you see a bullish candle moving in continuous order maybe one or two bullish candle and the moment they close you place your own buy order from there immediately so for example let me reset the chart view and then pull back to this area so for example you can see once you draw this rectangle like this you wait for the market to break above this rectangle and the moment it break above and this other candle closes you can then place your order from this point here and then one thing i normally do when i'm placing orders in an uptrend is that i don't really specify my take profit in most cases i just scale it up like this mostly when there are no other higher highs being created previously so i just scale it up like this and i keep monitoring the chart after some few minutes so but this doesn't mean you should do it if you are someone who's really busy you can just set maybe you want to go from one to two or two to one or any of those you can just set them and then leave the chart but for me when i'm following uptrend i like riding the trend in most cases for the whole day so i often like oh, keeping my market open so for example when you are trading an uptrend simply wait for the market to come and retest its previous high and then you place an order from there and then another thing you can simply do is that you can also use what to call the fibonacci retracement to actually do that as well when you are trading an uptrend so here's the two called the fibonacci so when you're using the fibonacci you draw the market since it's an uptrend you draw it from the previous lowest point to the highest here which is the point you came to meet the market which is this high here you simply wait for it and then you wait for the market to pull back to either of these levels so if you take a look at the fibonacci you can see that the market pull back to the 0 0.5 level which is also a good place for you to place a buy order if you use the Fibonacci. However, if you go with the pure price action, which is using the uh, rectangles in which I use, you will have to place your orders at a 0 0.38 key level. And if you should look at it carefully, you are placing all your orders at key level. That's why I need to go and watch that my other video talking about Fibonacci, which will be also linked in the description as well. So this is simply how you trade an uptrend. When you, when you are trading an uptrend, you simply wait for the market to pull back to a particular area before you place an order. And then here is something to note when placing an uptrend. If the trend has gone too far, don't place an order again. Mostly when the trend is not coming back to retake its previous level. So for example, let's take a look at this market here. You can see that it took this market so many days to come back to come and retake this area here. And in this case, our advice you shouldn't be looking for any opportunity to place a buy order again. But, ne not, but then focus on a clear new analytics on this market so for example let's take a look if you take a look at this market this market has been dropping consistently from this area here and then you can see it clearly it has been dropping consistently at this area here so this sort of market our advice you shouldn't be looking for a buy order anymore the reason why you should be looking for a buy order at this uh, key this rectangle area anymore is because this rectangle area anymore is because the market is going downwards right now and anything can happen the only way you should place a buy order in this sort of market is when the market break above this uh trend this low uh downtrend that is creating and then you can place your order like if you break above come back for a retest then you can buy it from the best since it hasn't made any sort of promise like that then this sort of market you simply leave it alone so this is simply all about trading and uptrend it's simply waiting for the market to break out of a resistance area and then the market comes back to retake that previous high that you created and then you place your buy order but in a case whereby it doesn't come back to retake it, retake it within three, uh, two to three days then the best advice i have for you is that 
don't trade it again when you come back for a retest don't trade it again mostly when it has to create a minor downtrend consistently before coming for it then you don't have to retake it again so here's a minor downtrend you see you see this one when you see this sort of movement it simply means that you don't have to trade the market again let it go this sort of movement just let it go because you can see clearly that the market is coming down and down so from here it might head down here go here and then just break from here below and then create a fresh downtrend so this is what you need to understand so i hope you are getting the knowledge here in this video simply trading different frame market structure and different frame ways in which you should be looking at to trade this sort of market so now that is it for this market and if you need a full tutorial on trading uptrend or downtrend i also have a video on that already so this particular video here is a combination of a lot of videos that i've actually made but then trying to give you a clear idea of the three different market structures we have and how you should trade each of them so now we are done with the uptrend so now let's go to the next one on our list which is actually looking at what we call the downtrend so this is also done and then the next one we have is what we call the downtrend so for the downtrend it's opposite of the uptrend the downtrend comes like this like this and then it goes back comes down to retake here go back upward and then come down below again so these are the downtrend move the downtrend simply move in this order by simply moving downwards like this you simply keep going down like this like what i showed you in that previous market so now let's go on to my chart and let me show you a typical example of a downtrend and how you should trade a downtrend so hello guys so now to trade a downtrend is just opposite of an uptrend so once the uptrend creates higher highs the downtrend creates, creates what we call the lower highs because the more you keep going the highs keep going lower keep going lower so now let me show you a typical example of it using what uh this pair called nzd card new zealand dollar and canadian dollar on the one hour chart as well now let me just go back to the four hour to probably drag the market together better okay let me just use the one hour that i came to meet the market and then let me go backward and then let me clear the charts and show you something remove drawings so here is a clear downtrend and if you look at this market carefully you don't have to be told before you know that this market is actually a downtrend because if you look at the market from this point here to this level because that is a massive drawdown in this market and this is what we call a downtrend because the market keep going lower and lower and lower before it will eventually relax so now let me also show you something that actually forms a downtrend before a downtrend is created first of all it needs to break out of what we call a price bid up area or what we call a sideways market so now let me show you the sideways market here for this let me draw so here's the most key area here boom our oh man it's not really that straight okay let me use um the straight line like this okay and then another one here so here is a clear sideways market and if you look at it carefully this sideways market was broken before a downtrend is created so let me tell you before an uptrend or a downtrend to be created for that downtrend or an uptrend to be really strong first of all you need to break a sideways market like what you are seeing right now so take a look at what this market did here first of all it came here came here came here and it took a fake out this always tell you that before you place an order wait for the market to uh, break above and then come back for a retest and then show a rejection before you place another so look at this one when the market went to this top here if you had placed a buy order neglecting my instructions before you would have lost already but then the market came back in here and then continued downwards here and then came back here and it did not go back to the resistance area again but it ended at the support area and then broke below come back for a retest and these are the points whereby you place your order it's when the market all actually comes back for a retest this is where you place your order and this market gave out a perfect example of that so i'm just going to keep it in here like this so now so you can see that this is a clear downtrend and then when trading a downtrend what downtrend actually does is that it creates lower highs so for example here is the overall high so if i'm to continue this downtrend right now i won't count this top so here i will say is the overall high this level here this is the overall high this is a lower high 
I'm on a higher, I'm on the hourly time frame that I see it guarded up like this and I screw the market together. So here's another one. So you can see that these ones are very tiny, tiny. But when I go back to a lower time frame, you see how clear they are. Or if I should zoom the market, if I should zoom the market, you see that these are not just some tiny moves. I just made it together so I can see it clearly. So you can see clearly how a downtrend moves. It's simply creating more lower highs. And the more lower highs it creates, it simply uh, means that the market is going downwards and down. So how do you trade a downtrend? So for you to trade a downtrend, you wait for the downtrend to break below the support area. So now let me get rid of all my drawings. You wait for the market to break below a support area. So for example, let's get the support area here again. Let me get it here. And I get my resistance area. So now you wait for the market to break below a support area, pull back for a retest, and then show a clear rejection before you place an order. So here is it. You can see the market break below here. So now I'm just starting it from here. It broke to here, it broke to this level, pull back here, and then give us this sign of movement. But then after giving us this sign of movement, you realize that it created this bullish candle. So you are not a, you, you can't be placing a sell order when you see a bullish candle. So what do you do? You wait for the market and you see that the market came back to retest the area at this point. So this point whereby the market came back for a retest, this is where you plan to place your order. The moment it closes below, so the moment this retest closes below, this is when you place your order with immediate effect. So when trading a downtrend, first of all, wait for the market to break below a support area, and then wait, wait for the market to pull back for a retest. And after I pull back for a retest. Take uh, a good look at the next candles. Did it create engulfing bearish candle? An engulfing bearish candle is simply a big bearish candle with little to no weak. And then, did it create any sort of rejection? A sort of rejection is simply a tiny bearish candle with a very long week. I don't want to use colors because we use different colors in our trading platforms. So in this sort of market, the moment this market comes here, this is the initial break below, came back for a retest, Pull below here. You can place your order here, depending on how you trade. But me mostly, I like placing my orders at key levels. So you can see that it, it pull, uh, it break. It came below here again, and then pull, move back to the top again before eventually coming down here to close below with a clear sign of rejection. So these are the points whereby you should be looking forward to place a sell order. So for this sort of market, there are two ways in which I do. Another thing I do with this sort of market, I use Fibonacci. So for this, I draw it from the highest point to the lowest point. To the lowest point here which is where i met the market and if you look at it carefully you can see that this retest here was at a 0 0.5 level also which was which is under key level you can see it here so when trading a downtrend one thing you should be looking out for is that don't put don't place trade when the market is not at a key level always wait for the market to come back to retest its previous, its previous low before you place an order so for example this market here came back to retest you can see you can see always look out for these retesting areas before you place your orders. Always watch out for them. If the market doesn't come back for a retest, don't place your order. So, for example, let's look at this area here. Take a look. You see that the market did not come for a retest. So, assuming immediately it broke below here, and then you place your sell trade here like this. Probably when it break below, you place your sell trade around here. Like, no matter where you want to put your stop loss, if you like put your stop loss at this top here, you will still be cut out. So, this is why you always wait for the market to come back to retest the previous lower low before you place your order on it. So, what I mean by lower low is that, let me get my, uh, this part here, this here is a higher high, it's a lower high. This one here is a lower high. But then the ones below them, this one here is a lower low. This swing here is a lower low. So this one's below are the ones step as lower low. So always wait for the next higher the next lower high to come and retest the previous lower low before you place your order. And this is a clear example of it. You see, this one here came back to retest this one here. So placing your order here is 100 percent safe. Bit like did I just I made a mistake by saying 100 percent safe because trading is not 100 percent safe. By the way, it came back to retest here, which is 80% safe for you to place your order. And then take a look at this one also. This one also came back to retest this previous one here. Like this one here. This here also came back to retest this one here, which is another safe place to place an order. So provided the market come back for a retest and they give you 
any sign of rejection that the market is going to continue its downtrend then you can place a other bet in a case whereby it doesn't i would advise you to avoid the market as well so hope this market made you to understand everything you need to know about trading the ranging market the up the uptrend and the downtrend and trust me I, I tried my best as possible to make sure that everything is beginner friendly that's why i say that my videos are really long i try making it easier for you to understand every single thing i share here on the channel so now that's simply it about trading the uptrend downtrend and then the sideways market so in case you don't understand most of these steps that i use in this market please watch the videos that i'll be tagging in the description because all of these things i've created separate separate videos for each and then also made uh this one to package all of them together so in case you don't get a clearer understanding of it you can look at those side those other videos that i've created separately for each of these ones that will be tagged in the description so do it to watch them at, as well so that already said hope you find this video helpful don't forget to smash that subscribe button like this video and tell me what you feel down in the comment section and also if you are finding difficulty in any part of trading you can let me know and i'll help you solve the problem uh with a video as well so that already said have a nice day bye